So I'm Jad. So you're, hey. so you're talking to us from um, from Dubai at your father's home, and Dubai is a place yes. where you were born. Yeah, yeah. I born here in Dubai in 1982, and uh, and my father and like here from 1977 actually. So yeah, so I feel like I have many countries, many countries to relate to, you know, my Sudan and Egypt because my mom's roots also from south of Egypt, uh, and also you know uh, Dubai. I've been born and raised, and studying even even uh, filmmaking. I studied in Dubai. Uh, so yeah, I just feel related. So when you ask me where do you live, I don't, I don't have an answer. I live in three cities. <laughs> I understand and that I like you're, you're you're a perpetual migrant. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know how if I can call it a migrant because you know Dubai to Khartoum is three hours and even Cairo to Khartoum is two hours. So just like when you move inside US. Right, mm -hmm. just like the same or longer, maybe. So I'm not sure because also my family they used to take us every year to Sudan, um, sometimes twice a year. So I just don't feel like immigrants thing, you know. Yeah. Do you, do you feel Sudanese? Uh, sure, sure. I feel Sudanese because also I I've been born and raised in Dubai, but till 1991 when I was 10 years old or nine years old, um, we, we back to Sudan for six years, actually. So I spent part of my childhood and, and part, of, of, part of my teenagehood, you know, there. So I think this six years when the, when the person be uh, evolved, you know, um, in, in his mind and in yeah, thoughts. And, so I spent that in Sudan. Yeah, actually, I spent that in Medani, the city that we shot the film uh, in the village around around it, and we've been based uh, during the shoot there in in Medani. So yeah. Okay. So would you say um, going back to Sudan and living there at these formative years? Would you say that's when your um, your desire to make films began? Exactly. I mean, I started loving cinema there in Sudan when there is no cinema enough around me to watch and maybe that's why I love cinema I remember but the first time that I I, I, um, I visited cinema it was there and it was like uh, summer cinema it was like open very close to yeah. our house like between the, the school yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I remember it was an Indian Indian action movie you know, so it was very fun to see how uh, people around me, they get excited, kill him, kill him, you know, and this stuff, you know, for, for the hero in the film, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I would just get fascinated by the, li by, by the light that reflected in a wall. I remember it was just a white wall, very huge white wall. What's that magic? I think it started from there, and maybe that's what I tried to reflect in Muzammil in the film. In the film. So let's talk about the film, which is, um, I mean, I was just telling Dara before that um, you really see a film that is so complete and mm. the way that, but on every level, on every level, you know, between the imagery, the acting, the story, how it begins, how it ends. It's, it just, mm. it's just such a beautiful, complete film, so efficient on every level. And, um, and there's a question that I wanted to ask you, and I'm so happy we're having this conversation because, I mean, I, Me I, I got the pleasure to, 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 to watch your film and, and, and give it an award because I was president of the jury of Fribourg. And I thank um, you for that. It was, it was a beautiful welcome. award because it was the first in pandemic. So I really love having that award when we just look down and oh, oh my god i will not go to festivals again you know so mm -hmm. suddenly that award came so thank you man <laughs> you totally deserve it your film blew it out of the water i mean the selection was 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 tough but at the same time for us it was unanimous really there was no mm -hmm. there was no there was no discussion it was like unanimous <laughs> and um yeah. and also i think i, I think it, the moment that we were seeing it as well resonated with us a lot mm. as at the same time it gave us an opportunity to journey 
and and uh, to leave our home and journey into a place that we don't know. We don't know Sudan besides what we see in the news, right? Uh -huh. and, and what we get in the news is just so ephemeral. And then when when Sudan doesn't exist in the news anymore, it doesn't exist in our psyche. Exactly. And so, and so for us to watch this film within the, the, the construct of a pandemic made it so much more impactful for us. Uh, you know, uh. in the sense of like, now we have time to look at the world, to really look at the world, to really see and dissect the, the world, right? Uh. And so that was a gift that you gave to us at a time like this. Thank you. you know? Thank you. And actually, you know what? This is exactly why I wanted to do film in Sudan after 20 years of no cinema, you know, of the cut of the cinema industry of uh, it's number seven or eight in Sudan history. That's why we, I just felt like it's important to tell stories there uh, just from, from the land of untold stories. It's untold because there is no cinema. So the stories, it's all over the place. But no industry to take those stories and put it in films. That's why also I feel Sudan ha ha has this like uh, a future uh, in telling new stories came from Africa and Arab world because actually it's very unique in Sudan. That makes it's the end of the Arab world. It's the beginning of the African culture. Right, right. You know, right. so it has that makes maybe you saw it in the film you know in the ceremony of uh, when when the mother goes to do the devil's thing in the faces but still there is something arabic in the language in the culture in the religion i love that and i love uh, where you the world that you take us into is just we may not necessarily understand everything that's going on but there is a way that you i feel like you take our hand and you say Come with me, journey. You will not necessarily understand everything, but you will feel, you know? And yeah. for me, the difference between an auteur cinema and what you're doing with your film is that you're making us feel things. You're not trying mm. to get us to understand things. And that's what, that's, that's what drew me to your film. That's, that's what kept me captivated because I'm feeling things. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing and, and my eyes are wide open. You can't watch this film kind of like doing something else at the same time. You can't. And so for me, um, my, my, my first question was, when the film begins, there's this carcass of this animal. Is it a horse or a, or a camel that we see? Uh, and it's the, the dead animal, it was yeah. a cow and a real dead cow, we found it there. Yeah, but I want the, I wanted it so it wasn't the script already, and they told me like should we design it? I said no 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 no. I'm from that area. My dad village is there. I know how much dead cows bodies you will find, guys, for the production guys. <laughs> you know, and they brought me three, and I chose this one. It was okay. like yeah. So um, so it begins that way, and so we're in the, the dead cows in the, is in is in the is in the um, foreground, and in the background, all of a sudden we see. We see the family, you know, like, mm. you know, um, yeah, moving, marching towards marching, um, yeah. the ceremony. So, um, I, I, the, the, the dead cow there for you, what, 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 what is it saying? What are you, what are you saying there? Because that's one thing that I, I, I wanted to like understand. Yeah. Um, and because I love the shot. Yeah. I love it. And I, I wanted to be to I started I know by you're a, saying, dead, a death it. I want to from facing. You a death facing people from the first frame, not second, from the first frame on the film, and life is marching behind the death. So I wanted the first, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to sell the film from the first frame. You know, I like this kind of film that sell me, you know, at the first seconds, you know. Okay, this film about this. It's a film about death and life, that's it. You know? okay. So I wanted that also because part of my memory, okay, all the film I was, I was trying to reflect my memories in Sudan uh, for that six years that I lived in Sudan in 90s, from 1991 to 1996. I, I was fascinated by some details because I came from Dubai, you know, studying in, in high school, English schools, and, and suddenly I, 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 I had to live there for six years. So I was fascinated by the different culture and stuff. So I think 
this is the way that I wanted to tell uh, people like, okay, this is what we are going for in this fall. How life and death can be um, fighting each other in Muzammil's circle. Okay. And so, so this, this idea of this prophesied um, um, death of a child, is it a ceremony that happens for real or is it, um, is it a tale? Yeah, something like baptizing, but in, 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 um, in, in Muslim worlds, it's not like supposed to happen always. But if some great sheikh come visit or he's around already, yes, they will take the baby for him. If not, it's fine. It's not like necessary. But for Sakina, how she's obsessed, okay, more than other women that we saw in the film, maybe. So maybe sometimes I blame Sakina more I blame the sheikhs and, uh, the, you know, the others. So Sakina, she's too much. She's overdoing things. Uh, when she knows that like, he may be dying, she wear black, you know, for 20 years. She's overdoing everything. So she's the prisoner. She's the one who present him. So yeah, so it's uh, the ceremony. Uh, normally the ceremony when sheikhs come, they came to him to, for many things. Uh, if someone's sick, if someone uh, want to, 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 to bury a child or in her belly or something like that. So Sakina, she said like, okay, I would take the baby for him. And what happened, what happened, yeah. And speaking of speaking of Sakina, I mean that that actress, and let, we're going to talk about your actors and how you work with them because mm. there's, there's there's such great acting um, direction in your in your movie. That's why I say when mm. it's it's complete, um, she just blew me over. I mean, like the intensity that she brings to the role, and just you know the moments where even she doesn't say anything there's like mm. something happening with her. And that kind Their of like- eyes. Quiet, yes, and that kind of like quiet <laughs> power, you know? I love that. How did you, how did, who is she? And how did you get that from her? Islam Mubarak, her name is Islam Mubarak. She's um, she's amazing uh, person and amazing actress for theater and TV. But honestly, I know her very far but, and, I, and I made a casting and I, I, I wanted that casting to, I mean, many castings, but that one, I, I did it in the theater, the National Theater, just for the professional one. Well, most of them, they refused to come to the casting because they don't understand the idea of the casting. It's, they, they, they thought like, it's like, ah, are you wanted to know if we can act or no? Uh, you know, you're a cinema guy. <laughs> you know, we are like, you know. And they told her not to go, and she came. She refused to listen and she came. And I, I was amazed by her, her, her casting. And I contacted her a month after and like, Islam, you are Sakina. So she got very excited and very uh, also nervous because she's a single mother for three kids. Wow. And she just like, uh, she, when she read the script, she can't really, um, separate but, but, but between Sakina and her and her and her uh -huh. and her kids at the same at the same age uh, of Muzammil, uh, especially the you know the nine and ten and twelve I think the the, the oldest. So yeah she get attached personally for 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 the, the script. And uh, I love her eyes. I love the way she can communicate with camera with characters just by look. Yes. And I like this kind of acting. Yes. I mean, you did a fantastic job with all your actors. Yeah. And, and, um, and Muzamil, and, and where did you find him? This is the first casting. I did just like in Facebook and Twitter and uh, Instagram, like just a casting call. And I had like 150 uh, boy, you know, or, or like, you know, guys, like uh, 20 from 18 to 22. And uh, Muzemmel, he appeared. There's my brother, give me a coffee. Good, good little brother. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, what happened is like, I did that casting and, um, and yeah, and uh, Muzemmel, he came and Bunna, she's uh, Bunna Khalid, uh, Naima, the girlfriend, uh, she's a professional model. 
and um, and also she came and I chose her for the role. Yeah, uh, Amal, Amal, Amal Mustafa, she played Sultan Nisa. Uh, she's Sudanese uh, friend. She lives she lives in Lyon, and by by chance she was there in Sudan, attending Sudan Independent Film Festival. And I saw her. I was like, Amal, can you do this role? And because you know every um, actress in Sudan refused the role because it had like sex scene, and right. that never right. happened she's in Sudan. In Sudanese she's history. Amazing. Yeah, and she said like. She loves cinema. She always attended film festival around the world when she's not an actress. She worked in Red Cross in, in, in France. <laughs> yeah, account, like um, in, in accounting. And okay. yeah, but she loves cinema. She traveled in her own for festival just to watch films. So yeah, she, she accepted the role. And actually, she's the only one. She refused to take any money from it because she believes she's not an actress and she do it because she loved that. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> she allowed me just to, to to book her ticket. She was just like, I want to support the, the experience. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. yeah. And you can tell. I mean, you know, because your film has like that 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 authenticity to it that everyone who was there wanted to be there and wanted to create this work with you. I mean, you can feel mm. it. You know. Yeah. Um, so let's let, let's talk a little bit about um, um, bringing the film together. Now you write a script like that, and because the script is, I find the film extremely political at the same time. I mean, and uh -huh. you even dedicated to you know like yeah. you know, the victims of the revolution, who are a lot of young men, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, um, how how did you get away with with a script like that, of writing it and 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 getting because. Sudanese you know how story. filmmakers sometimes we be, we are like uh, we are like the sheikhs themselves. We see future. So when we wrote the script and we were trying to get uh, like uh, approval for it, actually there there like the revolution wasn't started yet, right? I mean we 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 started having this in in 2018, and the revolution started in December. And we shot in December. Actually, the revolution started at the same day of the shooting. That by coincidence, you know. So, yeah, I mean, we got we got the approval because they didn't see. There is no cinema in Sudan, so there is no system even for saying no or yes. You know? <laughs> so we use that uh, unsystematic, you know, the, the leak of the system. We used it to uh, make the script... Uh, get the approval that uh, that we need and uh, but still if you ask me how you wrote the revolutionary film before even the revolution started i think because we believe we always uh, in a revolution mood especially from the separation of the south we just we start to be angry on the government because our sudan became two sudans and our brothers the southern, they became like another country, not anymore with us. So there is something from 2010, it's all about uh, like just to, uh, like an anger against the system, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So definitely by default, without even meaning it, I think uh, when I chose the story, it was like just to tell Muzammil, open that box and go out. Maybe that the same thing that Sudanese people did at the same days when we are shooting Muslim men running out. So for me, your film, you, your film basically gives us an opening to always seizing our own destinies and not, mm. and not being trapped a prisoner to, to a destiny mm. that is supposed to be pre-written for us, right? Yeah. And yeah. so for me, it's also a way of you speaking to your country at the same time, you know? Right. And it's not just a film, um, just for film's sake, you know? I don't, when I say your film is, is political, but it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of subtlety to your film. Mm. And, and what I don't like is films that beat us upside of our, you know, on our heads with, with yeah. the dogma, you know? And mm. um, so the way that you, you interweave that in there is, is, is extremely skillfully done. And my question to you is, were you, pull in one direction? Did you always know that you wanted it to be so subtle or were the moments that you really wanted it to be like extremely, you know, like 
political and, and, and a statement, what, you know, how did you find the balance? Or did you always I have never, I never wanted to be political because I just wanted to tell the story and, and it's not just about politics, it's about all the authorities. For me, I was talking to Muzammil, like, break the, break the law of your mother first, of your village second, of your religion third, of your country fourth or fifth or whatever, because it's all about community. So it's all about Muzammil, open that box, actually literally the box that when the kids would uh, they used it to bury him on inside yeah. exactly yeah. so literally go out of the box you know so yeah that's what I, I really wanted to say so maybe the destiny of sudan helped uh, to get that more clear because now you see the news of the fall and the news of the revolution all together in 2019 so that made the connection. Well, I meant part of it, but really uh, what happened, it just make it more uh, there. Uh, also, I wanted to highlight something. I was, uh, I finished um, shooting in 17th January, and then um, I left to Cairo to, to, to edit there in Cairo. During that the revolution, uh, the first part of the revolution, just the streets uh, run mm -hmm. and stuff, it was happening. But the set in it, it announced to to for people to come to the set in in third April, sixth uh, April, sorry. So third April, I left the editing. I stopped the editing in Cairo, and I I go back to Sudan to be part of the set in in sixth April. And I told my producer just one week, and I will back to finish the film. Actually, I didn't. I stayed for two months, two months in Sudan, in the set in, sleeping on the streets, and. Um, at the end of that set in, some massacre happened, and, I, and a friend of mine died there, a matter. So, you know what happened? Uh, I get back to the edit, just for 10 days editing, just to finish, to close the film, and then you know that the sound design and color grading and stuff. But that 10 days of editing, I was so angry. Uh, I was so depressed. And that really reflected on the film. I mean, I deleted like 15 minutes, everything that made the film so uh, classic or romantic. I just like, I used the harsh cuts. I used the harsh, even we had, we had a plan to use orchestra uh, in Paris. And then I went to Paris uh, to work with Amin Buhafa. And I said, no, I don't want orchestra. Just give me like four hard cellos, because that's what I feel now. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the same for the color and more for the sound in it and sound design. I think we walked in the, in the very harsh mood. And uh, yeah, that was the, the direct effect of the revolution on my feelings when I, when I, when I came back to finish the film. That's what people don't understand as filmmakers that all these things affect us while we're making, before making the film, you write your film exactly. a certain way and you're feeling something, right? And yeah. then when you shoot the film, something else happens. And mm. then when you, and then when you're editing the film, something else happens to you as well. And yeah. all that is going to be seen through the film. Right. And, right. and, and it's that, those, those invisible things, you know, that we interweave in the film. It's, 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 for me, it's, 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 the crafting of films does not just come from like the script that you write. If you're a mm. filmmaker who's like expressing like specifically in a film like this, right? You're, you, this journey that you want us to take. We just have to feel it. And we do feel it because we're feeling everything that you're feeling. We just don't mm. know. You know what I mean? Yeah, we exactly. Just don't, and when you're saying it to me right now, I'm like, yes, mm. of course, you know? It becomes yeah. obvious because that you journey also through the making of this film, you know, as a filmmaker with your sentiments. And that's what you yeah. give us. And that's the authenticity that we see. Totally and right. Totally right. And everything affecting, I mean, uh, can you imagine even during the shoot, uh, all, all those, like, um, we had this um, revolution. It was in, in Khartoum and we were in Medani. The revolution started and we were so excited. Like we started finally to shoot the film. 
and the revolution finally after 30 years started in Khartoum. And we had the French crew, they were like, they just came back from France from the yellow jacket um, movement. Yes, yes. yes. So my, my DOP, Sebastian Goffer and the, and the gaffer, Eric and everyone, even the, the sound, the sound recorders, the Lebanese, they were just came back from Lebanon also from a big event there and they were shooting on the streets and sleeping on the streets. So it was all in that sense. Well, the film is not about that, typically, but the sense of everyone around was there to do that. Yes, it's, 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 it's kind of like you, you foresaw, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah, I really yeah. think I think I I think that's why I have so much respect for filmmakers and artists in general because I think that mm. we 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 tend to feel things and see things that other people are not seeing. So we mm -hmm. sort of will foresee, but sometimes we don't trust ourselves, right? Yeah. And the only way that we can actually, the only way that we can actually materialize those those feelings and, yeah. and foreseeing things right. is through the work that we do. And so, you know, like when you take a character like Muzamil, who is basically what you're, you know, the way that you're using him through this is to speak to the revolution before it even happens, right? By telling yeah. him, out of the box, fight for your own destiny. And, and that's Because you we're... are the Sudanese people. Exactly. Muzamil. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, let's talk about um, um, the, the way you worked with um, with your DP. The the image is amazing. I can't remember the name of your DP right now in the credits. Sebastian, Sebastian Gopfert. Um, he's French. He's French, yeah. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, he's beautiful. so talented and so beautiful. committed and so calm. I mean, uh, it's very rare to find a director and DP working on set without really disagree once you know maybe yeah. we'll find that with uh, <laughs> with uh, you know like the directors and dps who are working together for four, 50 years let's say they will mm -hmm. not disagree because they understand each other but actually i uh, I, i've been introduced to sebastian two weeks before the shoot wow. I, I know nothing about him because i had my dp for eight months and something happened when we delayed and something about revolution and stuff, he couldn't um, be with us, okay. you know. So I had to interview um, online three different DPs from France. Um, like the other two, they did great things, you know. But with Sebastian, he did uh, just uh, two feature films before this one. And they, they look nothing like this film. I mean, other styles, like yeah. handheld camera and something yeah. else. And the others looks like this one. But in that meeting, me and Sebastian, I was like, uh, what do you think about, about the film? He didn't mention the lenses. He didn't mention the camera that we should use. He just was talking about Sakina, about Muzammil, about Suleiman, about yeah. the character, the relation, the sadness, the Sudan. And for one hour and a half, and we hung, up, we hung the phone, and I sent the producer like, this is my guy. Why? Aww. Because he didn't mention the technical side in one hour and a half. This is my guy. That's we great. can talk later about the technical side, but at <laughs> least first call with the director, he know what to talk about. And that's, that's exactly great. how and why I love his, his, fil his filmography or his uh, cinematography in this film, because it's all coming from understanding, not for, from a technical person, you know? That's that's yeah. amazing. And I think that's, uh, that's the relationship also you want to have with anyone who's working on your film is their relationship exactly. to, to the story and the characters because mm. it's from there that they're going to do their work as well, you know? Right. Um, mm. So what, 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 like, I'm going to talk technique and we're going to talk about like lighting and, and, and um, um, the camera that you used. And so I'm curious, I'm curious to know what was it like, you know, to bring, you know, and work with like, you know, mm. lighting in a place sure. that may be, you know, like, you know, difficult to like have electricity all the time. Yeah, yeah. Was, so what the, was film, the film, well, I just said that I don't like, uh, the, the, the call wasn't technical, but actually after we brought like 
because they, we don't have equipment in Sudan. So mm-hmm. with the support of Ari, and I thank, I, I thank them every time because they supported this, they paid for the, the equipment from Ari, sure. Mm-hmm. And we brought it from Egypt in three planes, four tons of equipment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was many Alexa. Mini Alexa, we use Mini Alexa, and uh, you know all the lights and stuff from from Ari, and uh, I used just the camera, and I used like uh, you know the hand, the, the, not um, what's called, uh, it's have name everywhere, so it's like uh, not not really like Steadicam, but kind mm-hmm. of Steadicam, small okay. Steadicam. Okay. Okay. This uh, that's it. I think that's what you, what I used uh, for doing the film, and I. I, I, I love the, like, um, to have tracking sometimes. Okay. So I okay. use the tracking. That's the it. First shot is a tracking, is the first shot a tracking shot? The first shot with the... Exactly. With the no, no, tracking. that was still. That was still shot. That was okay. still shot. Maybe the tracking when they enter the people. When they uh, enter, yeah. right. The first when shot, they enter the, the still yeah, shot, the they're, they're, they're walking like yeah. this. Yeah. Once you're, the second one, once they're coming in. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And I use the tracking more, you know, when... Uh, when Suleiman is dying, or when Muzammil is coming to to see Suleiman dead, uh, like yeah. I choose yeah. where to to use that, and uh, yeah, I like to to do my decoupage very clear, yeah, and I do it just for three days, and I forget about it, and I didn't see it again. I I left it in the hands of my AD, you okay. know, my first AD, and I and I told him don't give it to me in my hand, never ever. <laughs> because on set, I want, I, I'm, a, I'm a new person. I mean, sometimes you told me, like, I'm just, you have this shot. Uh, you need to take this shot, like, in four or five, uh, you know, scenes or yeah. shots. Yeah. I was yeah. like, why? That could be one shot. It's awesome. He told yeah. me, but you wrote four. I said, yeah. it's not me. It's I'm just two weeks ago, not me today. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, for example, when Muzammil is reading the Quran inside the room and his yeah. mother with her leg, she just came with the lamp and she crossed him. She wrote something outside of the car and she got went back again. You remember that shot? And he's still yes. reading the Quran. Still, yeah. That's yeah. supposed to be like four or five shots. And we started by the long and I loved it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, that's it. Yeah. They like, are you sure? Maybe you will be hesitating in editing. Said, nope. That's it. That's the so, that's the show. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. It's beautifully composed. The film is beautifully yeah. composed. I, I, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I tell you, we were so blown over and I was just like, wow. I was, I, I felt really bad to like watch your film on a small screen. Mm, and, pandemic and, things. <laughs> and to, yeah, exactly. And, and yeah. I promised myself that I will project it and I Please. will see it like on a big screen. <laughs> Do you have any, is there any plans of releasing it in, in, in um, releasing it in the movie theaters? Um, are you, is the film going to represent um, Sudan at the Oscars? Or are you? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, wait, um, for the first part of, the, of releasing it, actually in Cairo, uh, this is, today is the first week of the six months. It's for six months in Cairo cinema. You know, yeah. just direct after they stopped the pandemic or the lockdown, uh, it was there in cinema for six months. And every every time I thought like this is the last month, the, the demand is big. So, uh, you know, especially in Cairo, because in Cairo it won the golden, the golden star for El Guna Film Festival. And it's very known for, right, for right, the Egyptian. Right, right, yeah. Right. And you know, Egyptian and Sudan, it's just like one country, you know, uh, one history. So they've just related. Uh, in France, it was there for two months, to, for two months, and then the, the, the lockdown happened. They stopped the film there, but it's in DVDs now in France and VOD and Canal Plus. And in Arab world, um, it was also Tunisia, uh, it was in Dubai, but unfortunately not in Sudan because the cinemas have a prop, uh, they have a problem there. Uh, we don't have cinemas enough, just two cinemas, and you know we just we couldn't we couldn't do it in Sudan. Okay. Uh, but also it was in a TV, an Arab world, and, and they, we sold it also to Netflix Middle East, 
So it will be next week, I think, or two after two weeks in Netflix, Middle East. Uh, Sudan just chose the film a week ago as, as, as Sudan entry for the Oscars. And okay. actually, this is the first time in history uh, Sudan do a committee and the Oscars approve a committee from Sudan and a film being nominated from Sudan. So for the first time in history, this is the first. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah Congrats. thank you. It means something. The Oscars uh, mean something also for Sudanese people to feel, they just feel any success after, after the revolution, like a personal success for every Sudanese one. So the Oscars have this nostalgic, you know, the Oscar part, uh, concert every year, the awards for Sudanese. So I, I just, I want to give them this. You know? Yes, no, that would be, it would be wonderful. No, I know that, and this will be one last question. And, and I'm, you know, while looking at the film, I said to myself, I didn't know your story. And I said to myself, well, um, whose character is he the closest to? Of course, he's closer to Muzamil, and that's, that would be like, you know, the character that he's the closest mm. to. And now that I know you, I'm like, no, the character that he's probably closest to is Suleiman. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Suleiman is close to me. <laughs> and, and, no, and, no, no, he's not close to me. He's me. He's exactly. Somehow. That's what I, that's, you know, that's, that's not no tell sometimes I had to take out some scenes of Suleiman, so Amjad's voice became less. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yes, so, so, so now that I know that you did not grow up in, in, in Sudan, but you did go back and that's where, you know, your desire for making films was born, mm. then it makes sense to me now. So I'm like, you know, I said, mm, yeah. I think it's definitely. Yeah. <laughs> And he's an amazing actor as well. Um, Mahmoud al Saraj, yeah. He lives Mahmoud Saraj is, is a great actor. I mean, in the 90s, I remember I was like just looking for the TV to waiting for his, his show, his TV, his, his show, drama show. And uh, it was called like Blood in the Red Sea, on the Red Sea. Um, he was like an idol for actors and everything. So uh, we loved him. Everyone in Sudan loves him, you know. Like, Morgan Freeman Sudan, you know, the Morgan Freeman of us. You know? <laughs> Something like no. that, if you can say. <laughs> yeah. And how, did, so, and how did you get him, convince him to be a part of your, your endeavor? Uh, I mean, we are in contact already from seven years in different, uh, you know, just in a personal level as a director and an actor and uh, also he's an activist. So, and somehow the activism brought us together in, so, in same ways uh, a few years before the, the, the film. So it was very easy to see him during, I'm writing, me and Yusuf Ibrahim, my co-writer. And it was very easy for him to say yes, you know, because he believes in, uh, on me in my, from my short films and stuff and he, was looking for a, a cinema experience uh, as a professional and know what and know what he wants, you know. So yeah, I was so happy working with Mahmoud Saraj. Is uh, Mahmoud is like really a grand, you know, in acting. Yeah. And so one last question. So you see, what what do you what what would you like for your film to do in terms of like when people see it like outside of like Sudan like people like us and you know outside who do not know Sudan mm. what would you like for us to be feeling once we you know after we've seen this film what what uh, this film or my next films I want you guys to see a country that was present by El Bashir to and just like uh, had a fake uh, a, a fake picture that he decided to to give everyone out like you know the islamic the the clothes the the races that I, maybe i need to see i want you guys to see the opposite side the, how i saw it you know the way we saw it not just me me and my crew and you know my generation actually how we saw sudan i mean not, a, not, not necessarily as a beautiful um, part of it, maybe sometimes the, the, the negative part, whatever, negative and, and positive, I mean, just to see the truth from our eyes. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.
good luck with I enjoyed I enjoyed the, the interview a lot and um, thank you thank you for all the support you're welcome you have my support you, I'm a big fan thank you <laughs> and I hope I hope next year uh, I will come there for physical you know yes, without yes, COVID-19 yes and we, will, and we will meet yeah. and so good luck with your next project thank, thank you, you bye take care bye <laughs>